understand. Can I have the slides, please? A very good evening to all of you. So I'll be talking about post-operative problem solving after premium IL implantation. There are no financial disclosures. So the benchmark standard for refractive outcomes for normalized after cataract surgery has been that 55% of cases should be within plus minus 0.5 diopter. With increasing IL technology, enhanced biometry techniques, this no longer holds true. And in fact, 80% of cases are within plus minus 0.5 diopters and now the focus is shifting from precise visual acuity to optimal visual quality as well. So what are the reasons for post-operative patient dissatisfaction after premium intraocular lens implantation? Residual refractive error in 57%, dry eyes in 35%, dysphotopsia including waxy vision, ghosting, glare, halos in 26%, unrealistic patient expectations in 8%, intraoperative or postoperative complications such as PCR, vitreous loss, inflammation, RD, lens lustration in 12%, and ocular comorbidities in 20%, which actually are the wrong patients to select for premium miles. So here I'll be covering a few common reasons for post-op patient dissatisfaction, residual refractive error, dry eyes, and dysphotopsia. So post cataract surgery, dry eye is almost inevitable to some extent, vicious cycle of inflammation, tear instability and tear hyperosmolarity which is worsened by the use of eye drops, age, previous unknown DD and uh, topical antibiotics etc, surgical time, light exposure. So 9 to 80% have dry eyes at 3 months after cataract surgery. Preoperatively, undiagnosed dry eyes can lead to biometry errors. Postoperatively, they induce higher order aberrations and compromise the visual quality. Prevention, of course, is paramount. You should screen, like we were talking about, nebography, and ocular surface should be optimized preoperatively. It's self resolving in a majority, that's the good news. Topical lubricants is all that is required in majority. However, they may persist in up to one third of patients for six months and the degree of dissatisfaction is much more pronounced with multifocal IOLs. So stepwise management algorithm has been described. You start with lubrication, you start with patient education, modifying the environmental factors, shift into preservative free, then you can add on anti-inflammatory, secretagogues, topical steroids as and when required. So just a case example, a 55 year old female presented two weeks post cataract surgery with a multifocal IL with complaints of clear and poor visual quality. The visual acuity was 6 6 part, neovision was N8. So on staining there was a punctate staining observed and TBUT was uh, 2 seconds and aberrations, mul uh, modulation transfer function was deranged and higher order aberrations were observed. So topical hyaluronic acid with polyethylene glycol and propylene glycol combination drive drops were prescribed with a nighttime gel. So symptomatic improvement after three months of treatment improved tear film and corneal aberration profile and the patient was happy. Residual amyotrophy or astigmatism is an essential cause of post-op dissatisfaction and accounts for 29 to 57% of unhappy patients. It may be due to inaccurate biometry preoperatively, intraoperatively the surgical technique, the centration of capsular excess, how effectively the effective lens position is there, I will plan for bag placed in sulcus, toric incorrect power or alignment, in inverted IL implantation. Post-operatively, IL rotation in toric IELs, otherwise posterior capsular fibrosis, contraction, IL movement, decentration, tilt. So clinical approach, stay calm and counsel the patient, accurate refraction to determine the residual refractive error, recheck and re-perform all calculations, where did you go wrong, was it a biometry error or is something else to blame, check if the correct lens went in, is the lens position right. So management is based on the cause, assess the magnitude of residual refractive error and identify the underlying cause. Conservative management for minor refractive errors, spectacle contact lenses, fellow eye surgery, you may target monovision or micro monovision to take a, uh, care of minor residual myopia. Surgical management, corneal based approaches, PRK, elastic, carcoid keratotomies for astigmatism, lens based approaches include piggyback aisles, aisle exchange and toric aisle rotation. So post-operative assessment of toric aisle alignment, ray tracing aberrometry is a useful tool which gives you the direction and magnitude of rotation relative to the current aisle position. And in cases in which you have aligned improperly or the lens is rotated in the post-op period, it will tell you how much rotation is required and how much post-op improvement is likely to happen. So in this case, ray tracing says that no further rotation is required and tracy refraction is green. 
Corneal ablative procedures LASIK is superior to lens exchange and piggyback IELTS and the customized ablation of femtosecond laser intrastromal keratotomies may also be attempted to correct residual astigmatism. Of note, you have to wait for refractive stability for at least 3 months after the primary surgery. Lens based procedures IL exchange can be performed in the immediate post op period especially if a wrong lens is gone in more suited for larger magnitude of refractive errors. In premium miles, sometimes you need to exchange if there is intolerable dysphotopsia. Introp aberrometry assisted IL exchange helps in cases with such as uh, difficult cases with post refractive surgery IL surprise. So they give you the correct on table a fake refraction and help you calculate the IL power on table. And this was a case of ours in which there was a difficult challenging IL power calculation came from operator from outside of surprise and a post LASIK case. So post op day one after aura assisted surgery showed a 6 6 visual acuity. Then piggyback IL are more accurate than IL exchange. You don't need to necessarily know why the residual refractive error occurred. Exchange IL can be placed in a different plane in the, to the original IL and it's a reversible procedure. So when you look at the predictability of these intra procedures, 62.5% are within plus minus one diopter of final spherical equivalent with IL exchange, 85% with piggyback IL and 100% of LAS, with LASIK. So corneal ablative procedures are most predictable. Now identify the cause, observe the patients, carefully weigh the risk and benefits before retreatment. Astigmatism more than 0.75 diopter enhancement may be beneficial. So these are the various procedures as I have already outlined earlier. Prevention of course is better than cure and patient counselling is key to optimal outcomes. Then coming to the third cause of unhappy patients, dysphotopsia, glare, halos and starbursts. The incidence ranges till from 0.2 to 20 percent. With the newer IELTS it's much less. However, trifocals still have glare and halos, less with continuous range of vision IELTS and of course monofocals fare best with these symptoms. Inherent IL design, decented IL, large angle alpha, PCO, lens edge effect may all contribute to dysphotopsia. Management conservative to start with, observe glasses, contact lenses, meiotic agents such as brimonidine have been shown to uh, constrict the pupil and help in the dysphotopic symptoms till the time the neuroadaptation occurs. Surgically, rare cases, you can do a YAC capsulotomy if there is a PCO. Then for dysphotopsia, piggyback IELTS, IL exchange, sulcus IL, anterior optic capture and YAG anterior capsulectomy have been described. Most cases resolve with a conservative approach within 6 to 12 months, determine with the, whether the patient is unhappy due to the PCO or the lens itself. Performing a YAG cap can make subsequent IL exchange technically challenging after a premium IL. So this is another case example, a pseudo fake with complaints of blurred vision and a lot Excuse of dysphotopic symptoms. I'll just up find up. Yeah. So the optic was not covered by the rexus margin nasally and slight decentration of lens temporally. So raised higher order aberration, deranged MTF PSF. So these were the treatment options we have. We just started the patient on topical bromonidine and the symptoms improved significantly at three months. So patient counseling is of paramount importance because unrealistic patient expectation leads to a dissatisfied patient and unhappy surgeon. Just to conclude, dry eye disease, residual refractive error, photic symptoms are some of the causes that can lead to unhappy patient. Patient counseling should be performed and avoid aggressive management. Patience is the key to managing these patients. Thank you for a patient listening. Uh, thank you. That was a very comprehensive uh, talk and I think uh, we need to stress and we can't stress enough on the importance of patient counselling. Lots of times we tell our counsellors to counsel uh, patients regarding different IOLs and they might put it differently if we are using a eye hands or a vivity. It's very important that we ourselves tell the patient that we are not targeting near vision and it's only going to be an intermediate uh, visual uh, correction that we are uh, aiming at and uh, along with LASIK, PRK can also come in handy when we have a very low refractive error or it's a case who has undergone RK previously and we need to correct uh, the uh, residual refractive error then uh, PRK is another tool which should not be forgotten for these eyes.